Unfortunately for the undocumented, they live in the shadows. And inherently, there's this perception that if you're living in the shadows, it's because you're doing something wrong. You're doing something bad. You're up to no good. But the truth is the undocumented actually don't have any other option. There is not a line that they've chosen not to get into. There is not a process that they've chosen not to join. It is that they lack the ability to adjust status, to get right with the law. More and more, the undocumented immigrant population is the person that we have come to know or love, but we may or may not realize that they're undocumented. It is the mother or the father that is sitting one pew over in church, the parent of our children's best friend at school, the owner or the worker at our favorite restaurant. They are contributing to our communities in ways that just about anybody else is. Congress passed a law in 1986 that cleared the decks of the undocumented people. And that amnesty legalized about three million people, but it didn't solve the underlying problem. So it was like putting a Band-Aid on a wound. We did not create a legal immigration system for the people who wanted to come after them. And that ultimately resulted in more illegal immigration. There are approximately 11 million people in the United States who are undocumented, who in essence live without legal status, meaning that they're not authorized to work. They really have very few rights or privileges, quite frankly. Largely, the undocumented do come from places like Latin America and Central America, but we're seeing an increase from Asia and others as well. People come from all over the world, all kinds of educational backgrounds. You know, I might have people from Latin America that were lawyers in their countries, doctors, engineers. There's really no stereotype of an undocumented immigrant. What's interesting is maybe most people think, oh, well, they're just running across the border and that's how they get here. A lot of these immigrants are coming in legally with legal visas, whether it's student visas or short-term work visas, and then they're staying past those visas. And that's why they end up in the unauthorized population. America's a nation of laws. In a real way, the undocumented immigration in America is a threat to that. It seems unfair to many Americans that people aren't playing by the rules, they're not coming the, the right way. And there's a lot of nuance to that in the fact that for a lot of people, maybe they did come the right way and they fell out of status. And for a lot of people in the world, there's no way to come here. But having 11 million people who are here without status creates a lot of tension in this idea of law and order. The idea that the entire undocumented population is here to do wrong and live some sort of criminal lifestyle is just simply not true. They are here to contribute. They're largely individuals who are living lives just like all of us are, going to work, taking their children to school, and coming home for a meal with their family. That is what they're here to do. It's why they risked everything to be here. About two-thirds of the undocumented population have actually been here for over 10 years which means that they have deep roots, they have families, they have homes, they have businesses. And the reality is people who are coming to work are much less likely to commit crimes. And so it's unfortunate that the media, I think, has portrayed this as a crime thing, but when you look at those notions, they're talking about the crimes immigrants are committed, what they're not talking about is data. Because when you look at the data, the places where immigrants are moving in are safer than places where they're not. So if we rely on anecdotes and stories and the worst possible cases, that sheds uh, the entire undocumented population in a poor light. Of course, immigration is a very heated issue because it's people, we have emotional reactions, and there are many that think that immigrants are hurting our chances of getting jobs, that in fact immigrants are boosting the economy and taking jobs that otherwise would go unfilled. Of the estimated 11 million undocumented in the United States, roughly 8 million of them are in the workforce. They represent 5% of the overall American workforce. They're working in our restaurants, in our healthcare systems, they're working in the fields, they're working construction, and to remove them would have a significant impact. Imagine millions and millions of workers suddenly disappearing. Given that undocumented immigrants are 5% of the U.S. workforce, if they were pulled out, then we'd lose maybe not 5% because they don't have the same skill level and productivity on average, but even 3 to 4% of a $20 trillion economy is nearly a trillion dollars that could be lost. 
To put that into context, the recession of 2008 hit our GDP by about 6.3%. This is a significant impact that would not only hurt the undocumented which we are taking out of the country, but largely impact families across the United States. But undocumented immigrants are more prevalent in some industries than others, and more prevalent in some locations than others. So those places, like the southwest states of Nevada, Arizona, Texas, and California, and those industries like construction and manufacturing and agriculture would have a lot more to lose without undocumented workers than the general U.S. economy. We could decide that we don't want a $100 billion agriculture industry, but that's a very consequential decision that would have an impact up and down the supply chain. You go to the ports of Oakland and 40% of their exports are agriculture. I mean, it is not just the farm jobs you're losing when you do things like this. We have a very interconnected economy. Is it true that no American would take those jobs? Of course not. Some Americans would take some of those jobs. But one of the great successes of the last 50 years is that we are getting more educated. More Americans are going to college. More Americans are, are eligible for better jobs. And that is a fabulous thing for America and for American families. All immigrants of all education levels are on average a benefit to the United States. Higher educated people absolutely contribute more economically than lesser educated immigrants. Those two facts are not incompatible. The fact that less educated people contribute less does not mean that they're negative. Really, immigrants make Americans more productive, and that increases the size of the economy and benefits Americans' wages and their standard of living. American engineers wouldn't have much to do if there weren't a labor force to build bridges and roads and, and so on down the line. The other thing about undocumented immigrants is just like everybody else, they spend their money in the economy. They have to pay a mortgage or they have to pay rent. They buy food, they buy cars, they buy other goods. That generates more economic activity in what economists call a multiplier effect. If you were to take them out of the economy and take their spending out of the economy, then some jobs in housing, in you know, making automobiles and providing services would be lost. And so this idea that they are truly coming out and displacing American workers or creating this big shift in wages is just not represented in the data. Now that's not to say that these instances don't exist. We know that there could be bad actors, not just in the immigration population, but even in the business population, which may seize these opportunities to save certain amounts of funds. The unscrupulous employer is the only one winning because the unscrupulous employer is pushing down the wages and protections of the undocumented immigrant, the immigrant who's here legally, the native-born worker who's trying to make a go of it, but also the business owner is trying to play by the rules. The single biggest cost of undocumented immigrants is public education for their children. It's the single biggest cost for any American family because public schooling is expensive. It's an average of over $10,000 a year per student. So of course, when you have several million school children with undocumented parents, that's going to be expensive. To think that public education given to unauthorized immigrants are not paid for at all by these immigrant families is not necessarily true. Parents are paying sales taxes, you know, they're paying their property taxes, their rent, so they're funding the schools. In the grand scheme of things, it is better for us to be educating these children regardless of their immigration status in the hopes of them having a better future in the U.S. or elsewhere. If you look at the total U.S. population, regardless of whether or not they're immigrants, they all cost more if they're less well-educated. And they all provide more in taxes than they cost if they're well-educated. We know that children are an investment and we will all be better off if they receive an education rather than trying to create this community that becomes much more isolated and more likely to become dependent because they don't have ways to be self-sustaining. Look back at the current situation with the Dreamers who are proving that when given the opportunity they can contribute at very, very high levels to sectors across our society. And so when you think about the cities that have been in decline, where there's been a lot of brain drain, where the tax base has been leaving, immigrants are often the only lifeblood that have kept these places stable. But for immigrants, Cleveland and Detroit would have far smaller populations now than they did 10, 20 years ago. 
But for immigrants, the same would be true in Utica. You look at Akron, you look at Dayton in Ohio. Um, in city after city around the country, immigrants are coming in and revitalizing downtowns, buying up abandoned housing, they're starting businesses, they're bringing street life back, and you're seeing these communities become safer. But for the average resident, for people who are looking at the media, perception is reality. If you think that your community is unsafe, that is gonna color your view. And you can understand why people want police when they find undocumented immigrants. But the flip side of that is that if you look at the best policing tactics and why crime has gone down so precipitously over the last two decades, it's happened for a lot of reasons, but one principal one is an investment in community policing. When local law enforcement is being forced to go into immigrant communities and act as federal immigration agents, they're not gonna have the trust of those communities. Those communities are gonna pull back. And unfortunately, that is gonna hurt public safety for everyone. So you have a real conflict between this desire to make sure that we are enforcing our federal immigration laws with this desire to have safe communities. What's happened as a result is that you've had a lot of communities pass ordinances to say, we're not gonna check your immigration status because they wanna encourage people to come forward and report crimes. But that doesn't take away from the fact that it is a huge challenge. And, and, and it's not just a huge challenge from a, from a technical point of view and an economic point of view. It's also a cultural problem. People talk about crime, they talk about taking jobs, but when you talk to people, the thing that drives anti-immigrant sentiment more than anything else is culture. It's a fear that the community that you've known is somehow being changed. Diversity is a strength, and that the communities that have embraced it, that have taken in huge numbers of immigrants and people from different cultures, see that as a benefit to their education systems and to their economies generally. Even in the most conservative pockets of the country, you see places, whether it's in Iowa, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Arkansas, whether it's Texas, where communities are actively engaging in planning for integration, planning to welcome and make immigrants part of their community as part of their economic strategy. So if there's one thing that we know about the American economy is that we need two things. We need the skilled engineer as much as we need the skilled farm worker. The innovation that we've built in the U.S. over generations depends on a diverse workforce and an immigration system that provides a diverse workforce. As a nation, if we can find that balance, then we as a nation will continue to economically prosper. If we lean in one direction more than the other, our economy will move out of balance. So the U.S. is coming closer and closer to this precipice of are we going to continue to be able to grow our economy and if we're not the place that immigrants want to be, and we're not producing enough babies on our own, we're gonna really struggle to retain the economic competitiveness that we've worked so hard to enjoy for generations.